and gentlemen, welcome back to my podcast and welcome back into another episode. Listen, guys, I know I've been slacking for a while and I haven't posted some episodes, but it's because, you know, life has been lifing. But I appreciate appreciate you guys, everybody who has been part of the podcast, um, everybody who has been subscribing, listening. Don't forget, you can listen to my podcast on all the audio platforms. And of course, if you want to watch it on 4K, you can watch it on YouTube. So you can uh, subscribe to my channel and I appreciate the love. Today, since it's October... As you can see, the light, it's a little dim a little bit because we have a, a little bit of a spooky story, um, you know, a little bit of an October vibe, you know, the Halloween vibes. And um, before I keep talking, I want to introduce my guest, Kevin. What's up, homie? How you doing? Welcome to my podcast, brother. Hey, Carlos. I'm What's good? really good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, man. Listen, is your first time in a podcast? Very All right. first time. All right. Deep breath, take five. Listen, I'm excited to hear your story, bro, how everything started, um, how you got into everything, bro. But um, you told me, you know, before that you found out you were part of a cult. And a lot of people are interested in this topic. I'm intrigued by it just because, you know, I never been part of one, but you were. And we're going to get into that. So if you want to start by telling us how did this happen How'd you get into it? You know, how'd you go about all of that? And eventually, we're going to have a conversation. It's going to be so interested, bro. Okay. So basically, how this began was I, I used to go to GSU my freshman year of Georgia college. State University. Correct. Shout out. And I think I was in the, the rec center. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I like jaywalked across the street to get to the, I forgot what was the main building. But then there's... Mm-hmm to people there that were like, you know, talking, talking to people. And he's like, Hey, Hey, can we talk to you about, um, can we share a God's message with you? And I was like, of course, you know, I grew up Christian and, you know, I thought these were people that like, you know, were just trying to like spread the word of God. Oh, so that's how they approached you first with like yeah. God's. Oh, so it was two people. And okay. then they're like, Oh, it was not, it was like not God's word, but it was like, can we share a verse with you? Oh, okay. And I was like, of course, you know, I'm a, I've been raised Christian and, Right. I, I thought it's people just, you know, trying to spread the word. Right. And I was like, of course. And then it was two guys. And then they shared a verse. And it was speaking about the, you know, how in the, the end times there'll be famines. And, and so like revelation almost. Yeah. Right. And then they were talking. They asked me, they're like, do you know what that means? And then I was like, Bruh. like, you know, I'm like, I'm like so locked out. It's like six. <laughs> it's like probably like 5 p.m. Oh, it like so it's late, at the end of the day. End of the day, and I was like, right. you know, I was like, well, there'll be famine and, or, you know, stuff like that. And then he was like, but th- and then he basically saying that this was like a spiritual famine. Okay. So, like, people would be like, like, they wouldn't have the word of God. Mm. And I was like, kind of like, oh, okay. Because, you know, now everyone's like not, no one has the fear of God anymore. Like, right. No one's like taking it serious and everyone's like stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and this was before where I was like not really locked in to stuff like that. Into into your faith. Into basically. my faith. Correct. Gotcha. So, yeah, these two people like talked to me and they're these were like nicest people, like the nicest people you ever. So that's why you don't think of it. And then uh-huh. he was like, hey, uh, I have we're currently like, you know, we have a podcast that we're trying to work on. And then I was like. Oh, that's cool. And he was like, "We'd love to get you on a on a Zoom interview, because you know, like, just to interview you, I'm about that." And I was like, "You know what? Like, why not? Like, this right. is God stuff. Like, you know, I'm trying. I have to like, yeah, yeah, give it a try at least." Right. And then, uh, basically, get we get each other's details, and then he we meet we meet, mm-hmm. and then. He basically gives me like a whole like lesson. I don't remember what was the first lesson, but it was a lesson. It was like, this a, like um, in regards to like the Bible or like correct. Bible studies and stuff like yeah. that. Okay. So it was like it was a lesson probably about how I think it was probably like the I don't know if it was the very first one, but like you know like the sower, like the seed who falls on like you know like dirt road. The, okay. The, the bird comes and snatches the seed. Okay. So like those types of lessons and he would like explain them and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. i was like oh wow this is like nice it's deep yeah because it's like 
someone someone sitting there with me and like reading the word Mm -hmm. and you know he's reading the bible he's not reading something else he's reading the bible right and he's telling me how this means this and he's using biblical text to come uh what's it called back up the stuff that he's saying right so i was like oh wow this is and and nothing sounds bad because you know he's basically saying that the bird is the devil trying to swoop down and take that word of god which is the seed take it away from you right so we can't be the dirt road we gotta be good soil right correct they use that a lot in uh christianity as well like the you know the soil and stuff like that so i'm following exactly so then you know he was like hey man this is like yes we do have a podcast but this is really what we do we're just like we were we have a bible study and we're just trying to get people to you know, come in like... So recruit, almost. That's what it is. Okay. But at my, at my time, I didn't know it was recruiting. Because, <laughs> you know, they don't say none of that. Yeah. And then, yeah, they were they were like... Since I liked that first lesson, uh-huh. I was like, this is what I I want. Because I was like... Because I've, I've prayed before where I was like, man, just, just let me get... I just need someone to like show me how this works. Right. Someone that can like sit down and like just tell me how the Bible actually like connects to to someone's life or like how it connects to like the real world. Mm-hmm. And this was literally what they were doing. They were like, you're sitting there, they read a lesson, and these lessons ultimately would benefit you. Right. It would con- the whole goal was to connect you to God. Okay. And, you know, I would like continue meeting with my person the guy that I met right, for about three, four lessons. And then, you know, they'll just keep growing. And also we'd take notes on everything. Because he would, it would basically be a Zoom call with him taking notes and explaining it at the same time. So right. that's why everything would stay with you. Gotcha. He's like talking and drawing and every all the verses are getting written down in mm-hmm. red. He's making little drawings to make everything connect. Mm-hmm. So I, I used to, ha- I don't know what happened to these journals that i had i was looking for them to bring them but i was like i just couldn't find them (laughs) and it was it was like i would have these meetings it would it would start with once a week so it'd be every wednesday and it'd be like an hour so you know like not that bad yeah and then he was like this was you know these are just like beginner classes to like you know like some lessons were like how to build your temple so like you know how we are the body of our yep. body is the temple of God. Yep. He'd be like how to build your own temple. Right. And he would like use the how in the first temple, which was King Solomon's first temple, it was three three levels, and then okay. he connected it to how in our temple it's three levels as well, foundation of knowledge, and then our walls are of faith, and then our roof is uh, works. Okay. And he uses biblical. Because I kept that with me. Biblical analogy. He's Yeah. Yeah. So like the knowledge was, where did he begin? I forgot what was the verse, but it, it was mentioning how um, God wants everyone. He doesn't want uh, like offerings and sacrifices. He wants a person like a, like learning more of, of you. Mm-hmm. I, I think it was Hosea 6.6. 6. Okay. I think it was that one. Y'all could check it. Yeah. And then. It was basically saying that like God wants uh, you to learn more about Him, learn about mm-hmm. who God is, right? And then how in Proverbs one seven it says, "In the beginning of knowledge is the fear of God." Correct. So having that connection, or well, not connection, but having that respect towards Him. Yeah. So in the Bible, it states that wisdom begins with the fear of God. Correct. So I see what you're saying. So it's like. So when we learn about God, we have to have that, you know, that basis of he. when we talk about God, it comes with a respect factor to it. Mm-hmm. And then our a reverence. Would, yes. And then our walls, we use the verse of faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Mm-hmm. So connecting to knowledge where your faith will grow from hearing the word of God. So that's right. why your knowledge is your base. Because once you get your faith, I mean, once you get good knowledge, your faith grows from the knowledge that you're learning from God. Right. Okay. Doesn't sound anything bad. Anything. Yeah, it doesn't sound right. And then our roof is our works, our actions. And then they use James chapter 2, verse 22, 
where it says works without or faith without works is dead faith. Okay. So your works, your 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 works, to, along with your faith, are made one, made whole. Okay. And there is there a reason as to why they're lining it up this way? Come assume, what's the foundation? No, that's what I'm saying. Is there a reason as to why they have these three? Um, they decided to go. Are you gonna get like these are like beginning classes? Okay. So these are all beginning, <laughs> and the reason like these are the classes that stayed with me was like. The main one was the like the sower with like the seed is the word of God. Uh -huh. If it lands on one place, like, you know, all that. Right. So then these, they taught me them. And I mm -hmm. didn't think these were like bad stuff because ultimately they're leading me to God. Right. So, yeah. But where they twist, they used it to their favor was I talked to you, the foundation was knowledge. Mm -hmm. And these people were the ones giving me this knowledge. So I would always, they would use that for me to like grab on to them for, to continue learning. Okay. So like, obviously I never, I couldn't tell, but these were the people that were teaching me. And if I wanted to learn more, I have to come to these classes. Cause to no keep one, you around. Yeah. Cause I just, I, no one was teaching me what they were teaching me. Right. And then. I've never been like around like stuff like, but I actually have. So that's why I thought it was good. But basically I moved on to older classes. Okay. Like big group settings. How long into the, so in, into the situation was this? How long was it? Like, was it months, couple of weeks? So I met with my the guy <clears throat> that like brought me in. He was like, I met for him with like three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, it's time for big boy food. Cause you know how it's like, you know how it says you can't always, uh, like have baby's milk or right. something like that now you have to like get grown grown man food and this is with like group setting with other people that are also trying to learn with you okay and this is with an actual professor that like it's also like like just another young person he's like around 28 30 okay so it's like and everyone's young like some some older people like around 50 40 but just like like not too much right so i came to these settings we would meet at like college campuses mm -hmm. the like rent an office not rent an office but like book an office and not an office a classroom okay and we would like come up we would go into those classrooms and everything would be like i'm telling you these people are like the nicest people like we would go we'd like maybe bring some snacks we'd laugh we'd talk we would have convivio i don't know how to the word in english mm -hmm. and it's like it's like you community felt, basically community, yeah you felt love that's what it and it's and ultimately it's love bombing I learned that it's a tactic that they use called love bombing. So, like, when they target, like, college people that, you know, are, like, lost, don't really know what they're right. doing. That's why these people are in the college campuses. And while these people, are like, don't have an understanding, they get, they love bomb them to the point where you, like, feel something. Oh. And you get, I got tricked into thinking that was the love of God. And that's, Damn. Because I always felt like it's love, it's love. You feel like everything was they were doing was, was God. So when did you start f feeling like this wasn't right? Like uh, after those classes that you were taking, or how did you? I started. Um, they were very strict. So in what these, sense? So like we had classes, right? Mm -hmm. So I moved from one week to two week. I mean, to two days a week classes, mm -hmm. and these were they started from like six to eight. And now that was, remember, this was, I just did one day and now we went to two days a week and it was from six to eight. Ooh. And now it was two days a week from six to nine. And now it would be two days from six to nine. And you meet with your personal mentor, which is a dude that like just make, ha, checks up on you. It's like a friend. Uh -huh. Ultimately, it's a, it's a, it's called an assistant because he's assisting you to like continue learning and again these are nice people they're like hey kevin good morning how are you how did you how was the how was the the preaching uh, the preaching the lesson yesterday they're like yeah it was good and he's like what did you pick up and you know i'm like i try to like and then we basically try to like teach our assistant what we learn and the assistant's like basically you know helping us to like understand what we're learning right stuff like that and i was like this is good. Like it's someone that's keeping me accountable to right. keep learning. And 
it just it was a lot because you know it's like i'm telling you it's like two I, I still go to church outside of this too right remember so i'd have two class I, I went to school i would work i would do these two hour classes a day so it'd be mondays wednesdays and then thursdays i would meet with my mentor and so these Dang. were and you know sometimes i'd like i'd have to miss you know yeah but these people like that's where i was feeling like oh like when you would tell them that you're missed they almost like it's like guilt trip you into feeling like bad because it's like like we're doing so good we're like you're learning you're like doing so better for yourself kevin like kevin god just wants you to like like just mm. say no to the world and like say yes to god like god you know he always has his hand out and obviously we can't control what you do right but if you if you know you give your time to god uh god will see that if you like change your schedule to like fit god in right god will see that so it's like they always want you they can't they don't want you to miss these classes i wonder if they're doing it actually for you or just for themselves because you know like I yeah. would like to know that too because I'm telling you these people are like really nice people and I honestly do believe that these people are also deceived. But I don't know what's in the higher up from that. Dang. So so and so listen, when you started telling me all this like pressure that they're putting on you, mm-hmm. like there's a difference between like, you know, holding somebody accountable but then also understanding like life happens, you know, sometimes you can't go, especially when you tell me that it's two hours and that's twice a week i question that because technically they're not a church right it's not like you're you you know it's a non-denominational bible study right hmm but you know it's like i'm not i was never around stuff like that Mm -hmm. but i did you know how our church that i go to Mm -hmm. is like kind of like strict with like yeah you know so i was always thinking like oh this is the same thing like you know they're just this is their way of like setting order to their stuff. Right. Yeah. Cause these, each denomination has a certain way they do the rules, things. Yeah. yeah. I guess you can put it that way. Like some of them are just humanly rules. Like you're, you got to do this and you got to do, you know, all yeah. that thing. And uh, even though they're like, cause I, I learned how to separate, you know, biblical doctrine to church rules. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying church rules are bad, but each church has their specific set of rules. Cause right. that's how they used to, yeah. you know to benefit their community of people yeah so how did you end up getting out like what made you like that kept you feeling uncomfortable to the point where you were just like i wasn't uncomfortable for that because i'm telling you like i really wanted this carl like i really wanted to connect with god mm-hmm. and i thought this was it and i always kept ultimately what they would tell me is keep your heart open because once you close yourself close your heart god can't enter that's that's uh interesting because so I, I was like always like you know i was like okay there's doubts but i'll give them the benefit of the doubt okay because ultimately i know they can't force me into anything right so if there's something i disagree with i will find a way to leave or whatever mm-hmm. at the end of the day they can't physically control me uh-huh. but i always stayed there for the benefit of the doubt so maybe when something doesn't add up then i'll leave okay so i w- I kept going you know everything's like nice and whatever and obviously the 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 doctrine starts like changing where it's like um they start mentioning stuff that i haven't heard of before so like one of the things that that did mess- like they were saying like john the baptist didn't reach heaven what yeah because the reason being they used the verse where Jesus said, um, so John, it was where John the Baptist, he was basically saying that like John the Baptist was uh, the highest on earth, but in the kingdom of heaven, he does not end something like that. I forgot where it says, but basically saying that like, you know how, but the context was Jesus Christ basically saying that the kingdom of heaven is so much superior to anything in this world. Which is true. Exactly. Right. But basically what they were saying, were using was John the Baptist was so great in the world and he did not reach the kingdom of heaven because we would use the definition of kingdom of heaven as anywhere God is. That, okay, I see that confuses me and I see why that well would throw you off because mm-hmm. 
you're talking about a man who baptized everyone, you know, and Jesus. And you're telling me he's not worthy enough to to go to heaven. Plus, and there is a whole book <laughs> of uh, are we talking about the same John? John the Baptist. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> But ultimately, they also use the That's the right. prophecy of wait. Well, hey, this is you know how John the Baptist was um, basically the candlelight before the light, and he was the candle like what well, it was basically leading the people to the light, which mm-hmm. was Jesus, John one verse one, where Jesus was the light, and ultimately, when a candlelight, you use the candlelight until there is light. Like when there's darkness, you use a candlelight. Oh, right? I see what you're saying. So there's a candlelight. And now when the light comes up here, the candlelight has to turn off. Mm -hmm. And basically what they're saying was John the Baptist didn't turn off his candle. Because the reason being was when Jesus came and he got baptized by John the Baptist, John the Baptist didn't follow him. He he went his separate ways and he was baptizing people in, in another place. And they would use verses where some people were like almost... Uh, they would almost like disagree with Jesus because John the Baptist was doing some other stuff. They'll be like, hmm. is it you or is it him or stuff like that? And also, they also used another verse where John the Baptist, you know, when John the Baptist was in prison, he he asked Jesus, are you really the one that we're, that we're waiting for? Mm-hmm. And, you know, that makes me think like, how did John the Baptist go from being able to see the Messiah without no one telling him. Because remember, he grew up with Jesus. Mm -hmm. They were cousins. And he didn't know Jesus was the Messiah until that moment where he was in the river. And he saw John, he saw, he saw Jesus Christ. And he was like, that's the Messiah. And that was the Holy Spirit telling him. Because he he was living with him and he never knew. And then you're telling me he, he saw him and he was so certain that that was the Messiah. And that he was like, it's you who should be baptizing me, not me, you. Right. And now he's. That's like, what he said in the, in the river, right? And now, and now he's in prison, and he's like telling his people to go tell Jesus, "Are you really the Messiah that we're waiting for?" Yeah, but even if he says that's, I mean, I don't remember. I remember that part of the Bible. I'm not gonna lie mm-hmm. to you. I'm not pretend like I do. But I mean, questioning as humans is part of our nature. It's not saying it's right, but it's. You know, it's part of all the sin that's in the world. It's not just a one person thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Plus, I mean, there's a book in the Bible. I mean, just, I mean, so we're talking about the topic of heaven, right? But how do they, just because all of those, so they pick, they nitpick certain things. And then they're saying that he didn't make, um, make it to heaven. That's what they're saying. Basically, ultimately was because he was pulling people away from Jesus. So that was the reason he couldn't make he didn't make it. I gotta read that back in the Bible. If you guys are listening, I want to know what you guys' thoughts on this are because this yeah. I gotta read this back. Because ultimately, I, I I looked it up and I was like, never heard of that. And I feel like if you could yeah, if you would look it up, think... you would he would see something about that. And then I was like, and I thought the reason he went to jail was because of the purpose. Um, that was his quote unquote destiny. Like, yeah, but they would also use the the way that he's like Jesus was somewhere else baptizing people, and John was like doing his own will, you know, telling the king that mm-hmm. he shouldn't that he shouldn't uh, marry his his brother's wife or the, I forgot what that was called, but basically telling him stuff that he wasn't supposed to do, which was like if basically what they were saying was like if Jesus was already in the world and he's the light, why aren't you following him instead of doing your own stuff? Yeah, but I don't, that's, I got to look into more into that because now you, I'm, I'm not saying I'm questioning that, but I'm like, I don't think that's the way it played out. Like, that's the, I don't think he tried to um, not follow God or at least like what he had for, you know, for his purpose in life, you and, know? You know, I'd make those questions too, but yeah. they would say, it's not about, it's not about like, it's also about obedience. Like these people are like, because, you know, John the Baptist was chosen before he was born. You know, John the Baptist was basically said when he was in his mother's womb that this would be the, you know, 
the one that would show the light. So it's like these people have different types of responsibilities compared to us. I feel like it's like a modern case of like <clears throat> what a lot of people in a lot of churches do, which is like they pick certain part of the stories and they run with it. And you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, but you know, dude, I was like young and I had no biblical foundation on right. where to stand. And then, uh, yeah, basically little stuff like that. And then they started mentioning this dude where it was like, he was basically seen as the new John. So you know how in Revelations chapter, in, in Revelations, it comes from the point of view of John the Apostle. Okay. So John the Apostle is basically seeing of the revelation given from God. And basically he's saying the one who overcome will do these things and do this thing. Specifically called, so he'd have different names called the one who overcomes, new, new John, uh, faithful servant. So these were basically this person was able to have the interpretation of everything in the Bible. Okay. So, cause this was in revelations, it spoke about the scroll and this man ate the scroll and he was told to preach. Uh huh. So this was basically someone who was able to translate the whole Bible, all the parables, all the, all the prophecies, all this, everything. And this is where I already knew I was like, there was something off because I would have heard something like that. We would have heard, yeah. That's what I'm, 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 I'm trying to remember something like this. And but it basically, and you know what I would do? I would, I would, I would read my English Bible, which they use the NIV, which okay. is a reason I, I, I don't read the NIV anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I would tr look at my my Spanish one, Reina mm -hmm. Valera, and I'll be like, it's like the King James almost in English, yeah, but it. King James is 1300s. <laughs> Reina Valera is 1960s. Okay, so it's not. Yeah. Okay, never mind then. But yeah, but basically it would, like, it'd be off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know what? It's and then I, I wasn't even, like, giving them the benefit of the doubt at this point. I was, I was still in there because I was like, what are these people talking about? Right. Because I'm curious because I'm like, these people are, like, so dead on that this is the, the This thing. is the truth. And, you know, and I don't, I don't know who this person is, who this, the one who overcomes. And then I, I asked him, I was like, is this person here? The one who overcomes? Like, is he, is he here on earth? And they just look at me. I was like, you can, he's like, you can do your own, like, I say, you can think for yourself based off everything that we're teaching you. Why? He's like, if we're able to teach you that, and there's only one person that's able to, have that word then that person's here then i asked who is this dude yo i just my i, I ain't gonna lie i just got chills that's how i felt we were, at a, we were at a cafe spot I and just then i was like so is this guy here on earth he's like he's like if if i'm able to tell you this and only one person has eaten the scroll then what's 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 it and i was like who is this? Who's this brother, bro? And then he's like, gotta, gotta continue. Like this is not. This is baby food. Little steps, little steps, little steps. And I'm telling you, these people are so foundationally strong. But not strong. If it's not strong, if you're biblically, like not if you're knowledgeable about okay bi your Bible studies and all that. But I wasn't. You know, I didn't know right. what I was studying, but I was just curious. And that's ultimately what they capitalize on. And then I was, everything connected, what they were saying. Connected, 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 connected. And that's why I wish I would have probably, like, learned more about the Bible before. Mm -hmm. But, because then it wouldn't connect. But for me, it did. And they would, like, slowly, everything would add up to their To, their to what they believe, exactly. right. Exactly. Everything would add up from, like, the very beginning to the middle to how the, the middle and the, the beginning reached the end and how the middle hit the start. Like, everything was together. Yeah. So I was like, wow. Like, yeah. And basically, you know, I was curious because I was like, yeah, who is, like, who is this guy? Who is this dude? And I kept going to classes and, you know, these. Oh, another reason was like, I went to El Salvador. Mm -hmm. I think it was a year or two years ago. 
And yeah, it was last summer. I had to make up those classes. They had you make it. Yeah. That's wild. I would go, I went to El Salvador and I would make them up in El Salvador because I couldn't make the meetings, mm -hmm. but I would have to make them up in my own time. And I felt really bad for these assistant people because they wouldn't even give you the, 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 the video. So like, you know how there's a Zoom, they record mm -hmm. the Zoom lesson and all of that. But mm, and sus. it was sus. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about it because I don't really care. I'm just yeah. doing the lesson. But that's sus because it was, um, yeah, they, I would be like, if y'all can send me the lesson, I'll just, you know. And they were Take like, notes. no, we got to make sure that you're listening. <sighs> so I was like, okay. So then these, these poor little assistants are like sitting with me in a Zoom while I'm watching the video. So these, these assistants are like not doing anything but just sitting there. And that's why I, I tell you, I don't think these people like know what they're doing because these people's lives are getting taken. That's really weird, though, because these people are like spending hours and hours and hours and putting their time and love into this. Mm -hmm. And they're not what they think they're gaining is bringing people to God. But these people also have to work. They got to they got yeah, they do got stuff. Their, they have all their lives. Got their after, life. But these people I'm thinking like if, if I was in there for so long. These people are in there for longer and they have more responsibilities to do. Mm -hmm. And one of my assistants ended up being a, a pastor's daughter. Yo. So she she said I had to basically tell my my dad that he was he was in the wrong. And no. It got that deep. Well, I so, so continue because I want to get to so so yeah, I want. Damn. So the reason that conversation came into place was because they're at the point where it was like you can't you can't eat the good the good stuff and the bad stuff because when you mix a good and bad it's ultimately bad. Right. Reason they say that is I'm um, I'm going to a church and I'm taking these studies and only one of them is the word of God, remember, cuz one dude has the perfect revelation. So they're already starting to tell me, like, it's not good for you to listen to other people's stuff. And I was like, I don't like that because I'm like, everything's God. Like, everything's the Bible. Everything's that. But he's like, no, but this is the perfect revelation ultimately. So I want the perfect food that is not contaminated by the stuff of the king. And Daniel, you know how in Daniel they said, mm -hmm. no me contamina. Yeah. So you can't contaminate yourself with messed up stuff so they were telling me like you have to like stop and i was like I'm, and, I'm, and i was like i'm not i can't like i just don't feel like i should and she was good. that's where she was like look my dad was a pastor so imagine how i felt having to tell my dad that he was in the wrong and that he's leading people away from god now I want to question this chick myself and just ask her, like, yo, kind of listen to what <laughs> that conversation went down. <laughs> yeah. And, dude, and I would, like, break down a couple times there because it's, like, imagine, it's, like, someone constantly, like, poking at your at your faith. And, like, right. They're using the, your love of God, which ultimately no one can, like. Can remove from you, bro. Exactly. Like, yeah. So, like, if if I'm saying, like, be here because this is God's word. So be with God. Don't do other stuff. And you'd be like, man, you're right. I have to be with God learning. Right. So I'd always listen. And then so so how did that continue into, into what was your like breaking point out to like what, what led you to just be like, I'm done, I'm out? My brother at least sent me a TikTok. Simple stuff like that. He sent me a TikTok. Uh, about a girl basically saying about some quote in GSU. And then I look, he sends it to me and he's I like, He's got chills again, Kevin. <laughs> Go yeah. ahead. And then at least send me the TikTok. Because again, I'm not supposed to be telling anyone what I learned while I'm in these lessons. Because I'm not, and then that was already a sketchy thing. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Not telling people, and this is God's word. 
Like you want to, like when you're learning stuff, all you want to do is tell people more about God. You're, and that's what you're supposed to exactly. do. Exactly. So it's like spread the good news. So I guess that was something I, I was always against and I didn't listen to because I would tell Ali, I would tell Jackie, I would tell everyone and everyone liked what I was saying. I tell people from all my, from my church, people, everyone loved what I was saying. Right. They're like, wow, Kevin, you're learning so much. This is beautiful. Like Stephanie too. I would tell mm -hmm. Stephanie and she was like, wow. He's like, I need to start getting into these classes. <laughs> and it's like, like obviously like every, you will never think that these are bad stuff because yeah. all the lessons are ultimately making you a better, making you connect to God. Right. And then, and you know, we worship and we do all these stuff and all these lessons. And yeah. So I, I, I would tell people what I, would, I was learning and Ellie was like, Hey man, he was like, this ain't that stuff that you, you're doing. And then it was because he was like, it's talking about those parables because that's how I began. I mm -hmm. began studying all the parables of Jesus. And then he was like, mm, this isn't it the parable stuff. And I was like, I looked at the video. It wasn't the same. It wasn't the same name, same stuff, none of that. But I looked that stuff. I looked up that name. I looked up on Google. And then I looked up all their doctrine and how they teach it and all that. Brother, that's where I was. Oh, you got in the mix? I was like, wow. That's where I was like, everything connected to the outside of their cult. It was a, it was a Korean cult called Shincheonji or New Heaven, New Earth. But my Bible study was called Journal to Heaven. Okay. So nothing. So you know the TikTok was talking about new, new heaven, new mm -hmm. earth, and Shanji, SCJ, all these stuff, and I was like, that's not it. And also the 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 way she would describe the parables wasn't exactly what we were living. So I was like, right. no, nah, this is not it. And then, I, but I did look up that that stuff and all their doctrine, and then the, you know, the the one who overcomes the man that's on earth, I found him. <laughs> <laughs> and and for everybody who hasn't caught on, who was it? Lee Man He. It was a it was a Korean dude called Lee Man He, and he was the the leader of this cult in Korea. And once I I was like this brother is the one I was like nah. And then I looked this, <laughs> I look him up, and he was part of past cults called the olive the olive tree or the olive branch something like that. And I was like, once you're connected to cults, and I know that there's a lot of Korean cults that are going around, and you know, I was like, wow. Like, just, if you look up this and you hear, and you see Colt around it, you need to get, get the yeah, hell out yeah, of yeah. it. So I was like, nah. And then I was, when I looked this all up, I was, I texted my assistant. And I was like, hey, you know what, <clears throat> you know, uh, have you heard, you know what Shinchan Ji is? She, she texted me, uh, where did you hear that? But I didn't open it. I read it from my the screen right she deletes the message and she says no where what did you hear about like stuff like like how did you hear it or where did you hear that from like how she what deleted you know? your message no she deleted her message which said where did you where did you see that she deleted that message regrouped herself realized that that was kind of kind of affirming that yeah and there she is was something like, that exists. oh she's like no kevin what did you hear about that and once I saw that stuff, I I wrote like a whole a whole thing to her. I was like, dude, I was mad. I was like, y'all are a bunch of liars, foundation based off lies. Y'all are snakes. Y'all are Oh, you went off. I was like, y'all, y'all are the definition of wolves in sheep clothing. Y'all think y'all are good people. Y'all think that y'all are helping. Y'all, but all y'all know that y'all are lying to everyone. And these are all bunch of lies. Like I was like, and then I told her, I was like, I was, and you know, I was just mad, but I told her, I was like, I'm very disappointed in you. Like you, I thought, I thought we were like, f like I'm trusting all of y'all and all of y'all are just full of lies, full of lies. And then I blocked her. I didn't let her, I didn't let them give me any single type of response. Cause I didn't think they deserved it to be honest. Cause I, I, I'm telling you, I was, I was mad. Cause I was like, I was eight months into this, Carlos. Eight months of hours of nights of studying, wow, dude. Of all of this, and then when I found all of it, it's like a lie. It it 
did hit me. So then I, yeah, I like blocked her. But then, you know, I and then I go to Manuel, he mm-hmm. says, because Manuel is a part of ministry. He's so good, bro. And Manuel, Manuel is good, man. And Manuel knows what he's talking about. And then I basically would go to his house, tell him everything I learned. And he would. What did he tell you? I want to know. Yeah, I want to. Basically, that they structured it to the point where I would look for them. Because they would, every single lesson had a little bit of like, it's your fault. Like, it's a, like, it's like, it had something where it made you feel bad, basically, is what I'm saying. So they would use kind of guilt trip. And he's you? like, yeah. And he's like, well, you don't. He's like, I guess it's right, but the way they're teaching you is like, yeah, it's like putting you down. Yeah, because when you first started, I was like, wait, this is kind of sounding like the right stuff that I've been I've been taught, you know, and we've been taught. And that's what, what he was saying because he was like, some of it is right. Yeah, they start <laughs> everything. He's like, it's good, but it's like, but he's like. The way they're saying it is not right. the best because they're putting me down ultimately. And he's like, putting me down. And then he's like, and then it's little by little. He'll be like, oh, that, that's kind of wrong. And then we keep going. He's like, That's not how you read that text, but I guess you could use it like that. Mm-hmm. He's like, that's actually a different context, but okay, I can see how can that, that can help your life. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, you can't read that like that. Oh, and that's not what that means. So slowly and slowly as we would, I would tell him everything I learned. He'd be like, oh, no. And he's like, oh, this and no, no. And then he's like, this, you cannot read it like that. The context is not it's there. It's totally different. Uh, this is a prophecy book. This is a literal translation. This is all the specific types, like how you can't can or can't read. Right. And he was like, and that's when I was like, all right. I get it. Everything's out the window. I'm not. <laughs> you know, and then I was basically, and that's where I learned who Jesus was. I learned, Dang. I learned who Jesus was, because I was doing all of this based off works. Because I was like, I have to do better. I have to work. I have to continue learning. I have to do better. I have to be the best I can. I have to continue giving my time have to do all of this which i thought was okay because you know you're doing it for god but i didn't know who jesus christ was i knew like obviously i knew who you jesus had an idea was, yeah right but i didn't know that he was the perfect lamb that died for and ra- dies died for our sins and raised on the third day and because of him we are saved not, not because, because of, of anything person that, that i do now. yeah not because of how i work how i do this that this man is the reason I'm saved. And this is the man that that ultimately, like, and then that's where they disconnected because I actually never noticed, but they never mentioned Jesus as God. And that's because I, because again, like I, I knew Jesus was God, but I never really like thought of it as like, you know, the third person in, or the second person in the in the Trinity the Holy Spirit right. was God's spirit. I, I didn't notice that change that they did. So it would be God, Jesus, and God's spirit. It's, and you see the little change in the Holy Spirit to God's spirit. Dang, bro. Against the Trinity right. being Christian. So you see, I, I and once I got out of this cult, I, I did all my research on everything else. I studied everything on christians every type of denomination i could hear mm-hmm. search up the history of the church how stuff switched you know the great schism the the protestantism uh evangelist all that like how stuff like that forms yeah and the doctrines ultimately that you have to follow as a christian and how they how they uh what's the foundation that we have so then I, that's where i jesus came and i was like this is the one that we that we we have eternal life for, right? Like, and then that that took a whole thing out of my shoulders. Cause imagine I would like spend all these hours and thinking I would never be good enough because of how the way they would like talk down on you. And then this took a whole weight out of my shoulders, and it made just 
just made me feel I felt that love of love of God. That's where I felt it. Where I was like, wow. Like even though I'm like not the greatest, I won't like I I could keep trying, but I'll never be enough. And then I was looking at these people at this cult. They think that they'll one day be enough. These people think that maybe at the at, as the higher they like connect themselves to this cult thing, that they will be connected more and more to God because that's mm-hmm. what they're craving, more connection to God, and they will never find it. That's such a humanly way to look at things too, if you read the Bible correctly. You know, because all you want to exact because you just want to connect with God, but you'll and you want to be enough for God. But we have all all we have all fallen short from the glory of God, and that's why we got Jesus. Yo, <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, bro. This at the beginning, I'm not, I was like, this is sounding like <laughs> like, <laughs> but I see why people start to. Uh, I see why you thought this was the correct way. It sounds like the math is mathing in that end. You know what I mean? But when you start asking questions and they don't want to answer or they tell you that, you know, that person is here now. But when you read the Bible, it tells you it's another different story, which is, dude, man, I'm sorry you had to go through that, bro. That's But it led you to it Jesus. So to may, hey. And that's so what I was, <laughs> And that's where I realized, like, praise God, even though you pray for the stuff that you want. It might not be exactly what you want because imagine like I did pray for these Bible studies for a simple way to like continue a simple way for someone to like show me and sit there with me because that's what I wanted. And ultimately, it wasn't what I wanted. Well, you what God, you know, what I when when you when you told me that and the analogy of this is especially when you, you know, you're praying like, hey, um, you wanted these Bible studies, but remember every time you pray, there's always two people listening, right? You're talking to the Lord, but there is the enemy also always listening, you know, to even the prayer requests. I'm not saying that, um, I'm not saying, I don't want these people to misconstrue this, but there is somebody else always there, right? Even if you're talking to, to the Lord and maybe... Who knows if he took that into his advantage to lead you on and bring you on into something that, you know. I don't I don't know if that's the case, too, because mm-hmm. I think God used that to bring. But you know what, though? It made me, like, be aware that it's not what I wanted is what God's will is. Because <laughs> even though I could have wanted these Bible studies, but I never, I wouldn't. This I saw that it wasn't what benefited me. But you know what I see from that? It's the fact that God knew your heart and he, he knew that you were actually pursuing him. Except you weren't in the right situation to. But when he knows your heart, he will eventually meet you where you're at. You know, and he pulled you away from is, that. And the thing that I was grateful for is that I don't think I was. I don't think I was looking for him, to be honest. For God? Yeah. In that situation? Yeah. So No, not in that situation, but like before the, they came. Oh, okay, gotcha. I think I was like, I think I was getting more and more distant, to be honest. Well, and I'm it, saying during that process that you were going through, you wanted to build more relationship with the ones you were in, right? Mm-hmm. And that's where he pulled me back. Correct. As right. The, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 99. He left 99, the 99 yeah. to get the one. The one. And you were the one. Exactly. And that's where you feel the love again. Yeah. following the biblical man dude that is awesome bro i got so many chills during this conversation <laughs> that i was yeah. just like <laughs> um so when it comes to this guy that is supposed to you know know everything at this point mm-hmm. um can we assume that that's like i want to say that's the devil but is maybe one of his you know come yeah. You know, if that's the case, right? Well, it's also um, I I looked at a lot of cult stuff, like how they always have a like, one leader. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And it's like these cult stuff. Sometimes, and I'm telling you, these cult stuff also they're just, some of them are not evil. 
because these people are just deceived by the enemy and these Good and that's where i'd be thinking like these are not bad people maybe like i do think that this korean dude was evil because i think he, he how are you part of two different ones and now you become almost like a god figure in another one so right. i think like they have some beneficial stuff also there's somewhere like they get revealed as like a new gospel mm-hmm. and you know paul tells us that whoever preaches you a new gospel other than that mine they are sent from the devil right so it's obvious it's just it's just people being deceived and that's why ultimately we we got to stay close to our our word and not let ourselves be deceived by wolves in sheep clothing because it is up to us yeah to not get deceived you know ever since that you went through that i know you've had changes in your life and um recently you've taken that so serious that you ended up getting baptized Yes. So, you know, I want to congratulate you again for taking that step. Um, but what did you feel made, like, made you ready to, to for that step? Um, Honestly, I I knew I was going to get baptized probably, like, a couple months before. Because mm-hmm. I was, that's when I felt Jesus, I was like, I'm, because, you know, Jesus, uh, baptism is like a confession of faith. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is the person. Like, I, if I want to be, I want to be known as a person that follows Jesus. And I was like, baptism is a s- simple thing from my head there. I was like, I've did, I've done all these, all these, uh, look, all these studies, all these lessons, all these nights. And I felt the love of Jesus when that weight fell out. And I was like, this is, this is the man. This right. is the, I was like, baptize is, it's it. This is what I'm, but this is the new beginning. A lot of the times when people ask, uh, you know, how do you know Jesus is real? And a lot of times all you can say is just because you felt him. Because I felt him. Like, I don't know what and to tell you. that's dangerous though. No, but I'm saying, um, in the sense of like, sometimes you can't even explain, you, can't. you know, I, that, so, that feeling. I ask people what it feels when like they feel the Holy Spirit which is different but they they feel it feels like a like a hug and that hug like breaks you down like it feel like when you feel like you know how when you like feel like so much stress mm-hmm. and you feel like a hug where you just like cry i uh, i feel peace is what i was what it I is. Will, yeah and you like feel peace and like like you're just like shaking you're like scared but then you get that hug and you're just like it's just it's just super you, it's hard to explain it's really hard it because it's a spiritual warfare man and those are some of the things that i feel like it's hard sometimes to to even explain um even to feel bro there's a certain feeling that you feel when you know like it's the spirit it's the lord um but it, you have to experience it yourself i feel like to to under just kind of understand what that feels like you know what i mean and then you also feel it because when you're getting away from God, you feel something as well. Conviction. And you're like, you're like, I'm not in the right. Mm-hmm. And that's where it pulls you back. And you just, again, that's, that's God also telling you like, hey, this is. It's not lock in. Exactly. Yeah. And that's when you just know. Because then once you lose that conviction, that, that fear of God also. Fear, yeah. of the God is, fear of God is so important as well. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, it's just, I lost my train of thought. I'm not going. No, I no, no, but it, but it, again, because it's not, see, it seems, it, it's, it's not just so simple, bro. Like if, if, and you've experienced both sides of things, right? And on one end, you feel a certain way, you know, you feel that pressure of like trying to do works to get up to heaven. And the other one, he just shows you love and he's like, you're good enough. I died for you, you know? I love you. The reason I die is because I love you. He shows you the love. The feeling is totally different, bro. It is. Yeah. You just know. And you're a human being and you have feelings. You have emotions. You know what love feels like because your mom loves you. Your dad loves you. You know you, you know what? But when God loves you. Whew. And then when I started reading the Bible in a, that type of context, I saw how everyone ended up failing God. How, how Noah wasn't him? enough. Yeah. How... 
Abraham didn't Abraham didn't have that faith at the beginning with God. How it was, he he always he was like, okay, he's like, you said I'm gonna have a kid, so but not with my wife because she's too old. So I'm gonna have it with the servant. Or mm -hmm. oh, you told me to go to Egypt, but I'm I'm gonna get beat up because my wife is pretty, so yeah. she's gonna be my sister. Yeah. So it's like imagine Abraham was the father of a faith. And he began he, not knowing nothing. And, but he, and, and this is in the Old Testament. That was in the Old Testament. And, and, and he he messed up so many times. And he, and he the relationship we had with God was, I feel like, you know, closer than a lot of people would, you know, get to. Exactly. And him, even then, knowing that he still messed up, but God still decided to. Because he went from him not knowing, like not trusting him to, he said, go to the top of the mountain and sacrifice your son. He said, Okay. And he almost did. And he, in his heart, he was already. Mm -hmm. a, yeah. And he was, and in his heart, it wasn't because he thought God was going to tell him not. No, he thought he had so much faith in God. He thought he was gonna kill his son and he was gonna revive him, or he was gonna bring him back. Bring to him life back to life. Bef not even knowing that God has brought anyone back to life before, because he hadn't. Oh, that's good. He didn't. That's know. really good. He never knew God brought people back to life, but he already. He had that faith in him. Man. And then I'll see like Moses failed him. Moses, who wrote the first five books in the Bible, was one of the main authors. He was, he ended up not being able to see the promised land of Canaan because of his, um, because, you know, he struck the, the the stone. Yeah. It's like he would fail him. Or like Aaron, he built the, the golden calf at the end. David, he like, uh, he slept with a w woman that wasn't his. Yeah, his uh, he yeah. killed his f his soldier for. Her. And then Solomon. Solomon was one of my favorite. Supposed stories. to be the wisest man, no? Solomon was one of my favorite stories. Ecclesiastes. Uh, is such a good book. I was gonna ask you that. What is your favorite part of the Bible? What's your favorite either um, book? Um, we're gonna call it quote unquote story, but you know, verses or um, parable that you, wh what is that you feel like you, uh, um, to connect me to Jesus, it was obviously the gospels. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did like John, the gospel of John, because, you know, at the beginning, that's where I saw the connection where it told us Jesus is God or in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God mm -hmm. and he was made flesh. So boom, as Jesus is God, he was there at the beginning um, but the one that I try to live my life more is Ecclesiastes with Solomon because the context of like being the wisest man in the, in the world, in the world, having all the riches he could ever wanted because of, you know, when, when God loves someone so much, he like, he, uh, what, how do I say it? He gives his children. I don't know if you know that because like oh, Abraham, cause God knows. I have a thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. Like God loved Abraham so much that all of his descendants he got uh, blessed because of it. So yes. he loved David so much that he blessed Solomon. And Solomon, he and Solomon was a good person. He was like, he said, like, you can have anything, what do you want? I want wisdom. No one would choose that. But now he had wisdom and he had a kingdom like no other in the Bible. He had anything he could think of. He had he had land, cattle, concubines, wives, all that. He experienced the world. And this man is telling you everything's meaningless. Todo se es vanidad. Towards the end. And yeah. he's like, I have lived everything possible that you could think of. And nothing was enough. Everything is meaningless. And I, I like the context of having a king who in all his glory and all his reign, all his, again, this is not just a, like, you know, just a, a knucklehead, wise man. Mm -hmm. He reached everything that you probably want. Like, you know how some of like, I want, I want this, I want that, I want yeah. that. And this man's telling you because he had the it The physical all, things in life. Is never enough. Only a connection with God. And poor dude. And, you know, the, the irony is that he disconnected from God. 
so remind me, what did he do again afterwards? Uh, he started uh, doing the false idols because of all the women he was with. Mm. All of the women were like, you know, they weren't fearful, fearful of God, and they also had their idols, and they would be like, build me a shrine or something like that. And he would build them, and he would pray with them. Oh, that's crazy. And that's the king of Israel. That's and that's wild. ultimately how the kingdom of Israel separated from God, and they went under under captivity to other nations. And that's, that's the crazy. man, the wisest man who had everything. Hey, that is really good. I I I, I don't even remember how that ended. That um, that yeah. book in the Bible ended, but that's uh interesting to hear now. I'm gonna have to go and just read that, run it back. Yeah, because it, it doesn't tell you in Ecclesiastes, because obviously he was he wrote that. Mm-hmm. He wrote that. He wrote Proverbs. He wrote Proverbs. Yep. And Psalms Proverbs so good too. I Proverbs, love Proverbs is very, yeah, yeah. You could see the knowledge in there, but Ecclesiastes, I just like the context of all the beauty and nothing's enough. Nothing. Nothing's. That's good, dude. I feel like I, that's a, that's good to hear, man. A lot of people need to hear that. You know, when I was trying to find uh, the verse that you were referring to, like that that art resembles that, I mm-hmm. cracked my neck when I came back, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it hurts, bro. But I'm still trying to find it, dude. I think I, it was literally. It was, oh, it's over there. I can't even see it, but it's right there. I know what it is. Uh-huh. It's um, it's the one that says that God promises. Um, I forgot now. I forgot which one it was. But it's. I'll show you probably afterwards. Um, but it's good. Um, my, my friend gave me that, and I always had that there. I should have learned the verse, to be honest. Yeah. Um, cool. dude. But you'll see how God. Yeah, God blesses. Those who blesses the the descendancy of the ones that he mm-hmm. loved. So, like, where do we see it? Like Jacob. Jacob had all his kids, but he couldn't have one with his preferred wife, because you know he had Rachel and Leah. He loved Rachel, but Leah was the one that was given to him at first, and Leah was the only one that was giving him kids. But he blessed the descendancy of the kid that. Of his preferred wife. Mm-hmm. So then that's where Joseph came. So like even though that wasn't his first son, that was his. That's where you can see God like. It's it's the connection between a man and a woman. Right. One woman and one man. So if he wasn't, he didn't have it with Leah. He had it with Rachel and he blessed his. He honored that. Mm-hmm. I think. Have you ever thought about. Uh, and I was. Um, I, was telling, I was in a men's small group. Kevin, how when you talk about God's, when he died for our sins, right? I feel like sometimes we take that lightly because, you know, it's, you kind of use that, you know. As a safety. Yeah, you know, but check this out. When you look at the purpose behind, right, there is a man who's half human and half God, right? Full human, full God. Is that what? Is that what? That's the difference. He's a hundred percent human a hundred percent god and that's where people mm-hmm. that's where it's like iffy because it's like how can you be a hundred percent human how can you be a hundred percent well god? i guess when i say that is and i see where you're coming from i guess when i say that is i say it in a sense of like he's he he's half and half but like to complete a whole i guess is what i'm saying mm, uh-huh. does that make sense yeah not to separate the two yeah but to complete the, but i i like actually like that i like that better so full human full god right mm-hmm. and i don't know if like i when i heard this like part of the bible and as to you know one of the reasons why he came down why he sent his son right the fact that one of the main reasons was so he could understand what we feel as humans is so cool. You know, the day before um, Jesus is about to get, the night before Jesus is about to get crucified, you know, he asked his father, will you let this cup pass me? But your will be done. So many things that we can get from that, that at that moment, Jesus, his human side came out and said, Hey man, I'm I'm shook. I'm scared. I'm, scared. I, I'm I'm worried. I'm anxious. I'm fearful. And all my life, I always wonder, like, how God, you're Almighty. How can you relate to what I'm going through? 
one of the purpose that he's he human. sent it's he's, he he understood because of Jesus. This is why the connection is you get to him through Jesus, right? And then on top of that, think about when he got crucified. He he took all of our sins, right? People who have lived, uh, people who are living, and people who will live. You know. And we can't even deal with our own own sins. We struggle with our own one one person. And that's why Jesus has to throw give it to him. Ex- ex- and this is the beautiful part. One person, Kevin. We can't even deal with our own sins. Now imagine Jesus taking billions of sins. And, and, that, and, and that is. And the thing is, he was he was alone when he got crucified. The the spirit of God wasn't with him because God does not dwell among sin. Wait, yo, actually, that is something that I, I haven't, I, I, if I've heard it, I forgot it, but he keep, said, get into that. He Let said, me hear that. Uh, Let me hear that. You know how he would, he he quoted uh, songs, no, Psalms, where he says, my God, why have you forsaken me? Basically saying, like, why did you leave me? It was, he was, he was separated from there because God does not dwell among sin. And he felt that, he felt all of that by himself. So is that something that's in the Bible or like people interpret it that way? I've heard it a lot because that's, he does say, why have you forsaken? Yeah, me? I remember that part. And that's ultimately. You we, think and, it was and, because. And, it, and, it, and there is a verse where it says, God does not dwell among sin. So people put two and two together and that's yeah. where you're coming from. Hmm. I would like to get into that too. I'd like to get into more into that because. Because it's either that or he's just singing Psalms. But some people think people basically say that Psalms was a basically a how do you say it? like a, not a prophecy, but like of what was to come. It was Jesus's last words, or not his last words, but it was him saying basically that why why have you forsaken me? Where 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 are you? Because again, this is I gotta look. I gotta I gotta ask. I would I would bring that to my small group, and we we'll, we can talk about that. Um, because those are interesting things to talk about, you know, and like and get more info on that. Because I, I, if I've heard of that for some reason, it clicked when you said that. But at the same time, I, I'm like, not sure. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure of that. But yeah. I appreciate you bringing that up. That's interesting. Yeah, because that's for and that's then good. It's like for this dude, and then obviously, like sometimes I get scared of like, what, like what if a lot of people probably have the question where like, how do I know where if I did enough or like, what, how do I know if I'm making it to heaven? First of all, you have to be so certain that your faith is, you have to get your faith so strong that Jesus is going to like, that G- what Jesus says is true. Yeah, you got to believe that. That you believe in him and that yeah. because of him, you will be saved. Yeah. I And for the most important part, it's the relationship that you have with him. Mm-hmm. It's not your, the works. Obviously the works come through um, your faith. eventually uh, when you're faithful and, and you're walking with him. But one of the most important parts, if not the most important, is the relationship you have with him. Um, because, you know, you want to hear those words at the end. Well, well done, my good and faithful servant. Right. And you got to remind yourself of the relationship that you have with him. And once you he says, once you accept him into your life as your Lord and Savior, nothing can separate you from him. your love cannot be separated from him. Obviously. If you have a relationship and you keep building a relationship with him, so also well, basically what I was saying is, God, you will be judged ultimately at the end, right? Mm-hmm. For all of your 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 things, and then your sins, yeah. And then someone was basically saying, I, I heard this from someone where it was like, sometimes you like get nervous because it's like, what if, like, like they just get nervous. Obviously, like you're gonna get judged, but. The person that's gonna judge you is the person that on his like at the point of his death, after getting bit, like beaten, spat on, ridiculed, like defaced, all that. He did all that and he still said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And that person is gonna be the one to judge you. That's love. And imagine, and, and there's no one on earth that you would rather have judged yeah. than someone that yeah. came here, was perfect, did nothing wrong, got bit, got beaten, spat on, hit, crucified, crucified, and basically embarrassed in front of everyone. Yeah, and still loved. Asked else. his father to forgive him. That's now that's love. 
and that's a great perspective to have too. I'm assuming you remind yourself of, of that a lot. I do, cause it's like, cause uh, yeah, that's the person that's gonna judge you at the end, and that's and that and ultimately, and this is where people like you know always be like, only God could judge me, you know, <laughs> no, no, and that's no. like, and you know that's like such a, a scary thing, but it's like, it's it's a, in a different context where it's like you're not doing this because because you're scared of God, but you do this because you love what this what jesus mm -hmm. did for you you love that you have that freedom now that like you can live in in certainty but you don't do use that to do whatever you want instead you use that to love them and get more connected right and and like you mentioned earlier kevin the fear of god is not you having actual fear towards him but it's the reverence of yes, his presence correct it's the awe. There's a book on that that I read last year that referred to all of that, like the awe of God, the f the fear of God. But it's the reverence you need to have, you know, when even when you pray, you know, sometimes when we pray, we just, you know, we just say the prayer. But like whenever you're in that moment, you need to have the remind yourself of that reverence that you have towards uh, the Lord because he's the highest of highest. Obviously, if you believe in him. Right. And I don't. You know, we don't want people to think that it's an actual fear. Like, oh my God, like if I do something, no, it's because at the end of the day, God is love and you have to remind yourself of that. And, you know, the moment you realize that you are human and you will commit mistakes and you, you know, it will happen. It's not an if and but, but it's the relationship that you build. It's the the lessons to learn. Um, and one day, hopefully, you know, you live for his purpose. Correct. At the end, it's his will be done not ours let this cup pass me but your will be done that's that was deep now when i read when i understood that i was like yo that's let your will done let yeah. your will be done yeah the hey. lord's prayer kevin this was good man this I'm was sorry. good i i appreciate you coming and sharing and being vulnerable um and I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you. This got deeper than I thought it would, but I love that, bro, because I feel like this is how natural conversations happen, you know. And I appreciate you opening up your faith to not just myself, but to a lot of people listening. Um, and you know, they will listen to your story, you know, through TikTok, YouTube, some through Instagram. But I appreciate that, man. And, and I want to say I am very proud of you for how far you came. Because you seem like you're on top of your game, bro. And hopefully that remains for the rest of your life, homie. So, you know, appreciate you, man. This is this was this is beautiful. So thank you for coming on my podcast, bro. Thank you. Hey man, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoy these conversations. Um, you know, the vulnerability that we have in this podcast is is it's amazing. Uh, a lot of people just sharing the the real life stories and you know their their journey. Um this was good. I ain't gonna lie. I got, I, you know, I wish I would keep. We might have a part two eventually, Kevin. You need, you need, we, need, we, need to, we need to run it back again and you need to come back. But thank you guys for everyone who has been listening. Don't forget that you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're listening through a YouTube channel, of course, you can watch it in 4K. And if you wanna, you know, show some love also to all the audio uh, platforms, we got Spotify, Amazon Music, and Apple Podcasts. We're also on there. If you can leave a review or you can just, you know, um, shout out. You know, spread the love to your friends and family. We can keep going to my channel. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you. We're close to 1 million views on my channel. And we'll probably hit that next year, but that would be a really cool milestone. So we're going to keep grinding. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Kevin, again, brother, my brother in Christ, man. Hey, thank you for coming, man. Appreciate thank you. you. Bro. All right, man. You guys have a blessed one. See you guys on the next one. Peace and love, baby.